I'm Phil Pratt. I'm the organist here at Christ Episcopal Church in Charlevoix, Michigan, and I'd like to welcome you to this online organ concert. We're going to begin and end the concert with toccatas. The word toccata means touch, so an organ toccata is technically a piece that demonstrates the organist's touch on the keys. But the name has come to be associated with flashy, exciting pieces. There are many, many organ toccatas. This next piece is one of the best known of all of them. It is the Toccata in D minor by Johann Sebastian Bach. Before we go on, I need to tell you about one particular time I played that piece that I will never forget. I was actually practicing for a concert I was giving at the, on the big pipe organ in Central Reformed Church in downtown Grand Rapids. It was late at night, I was all alone, the sanctuary was totally dark other than the light on the organ, and outside a storm was raging. I felt like I was in some scary movie. But anyhow, it, that memory will always stick with me. But let's move on. The next piece is a fanfare. Now, as we'll see a little bit later in the program, there are different types of fanfares. But this is a classic fanfare, which is a short ceremonial piece on brass instruments designed to honor some important person or introduce some important event, like the Kentucky Derby, for example. 
Aaron Copeland composed this fanfare during World War II, and the person he wanted to honor was really all the men and women that would be participating in the war effort. He struggled to come up with a name for the fanfare, but ultimately he got an idea from a speech given by Henry Wallace, who was the vice president at the time. And in that speech, he talked about the century of the common man. So here is the fanfare for the common man. What do you get when you take a little bit of when the saints go marching in, throw in a little bit of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, a bit of the Hallelujah Chorus by Handel, and just for good measure, a pinch of the Bach Toccata that we just heard a moment ago, and then mix it all up? The answer to me is you get a very wonderful and fun piece called Dance with the Saints by Colin Maubey.
In 1910, Frederick Weatherly composed a piece called Danny Boy. It didn't have the same tune that we're familiar with at all. And in fact, it didn't do that well. It wasn't all that popular and in all probability would have just faded into obscurity. Except for the fact that his sister-in-law, Margaret, happened to hear a performance of a traditional Irish air. Now an air is just a song-like piece. Anyhow, she heard a performance of a traditional Irish air from the county Londonderry and she loved it. But more importantly, she thought that would be a great tune for Danny Boy. So she sketched out the melody, she sent it to Frederick, he agreed and changed the tune. The result, of course, is the piece that's still known and loved over a hundred years later. Here is Londonderry Air, that traditional air that Margaret heard and that became the tune for Danny Boy. For 14 years of my life, I was the organist at the Heartside Chapel, part of Heartside Ministry, a ministry to the poor and the homeless in the inner city of Grand Rapids. It was a wonderful experience, a wonderful ministry, and absolutely terrific people. The reason I mention it now has to do with the next piece. I played this piece for postludes at a number of churches, and a lot of times people will say it, it reminds them of a carnival. They'll ask me, when am I gonna do the carnival piece again? But at Heartside, it was a little different because of one particular Sunday. I played it as a postlude. People were gathered around the organ like they often did, finished the piece, and a man named Billy Joe spoke up and said, I love that. Well, thank you, Billy Joe. 
Then he uttered the line that I will always remember. He said, yeah, I felt like I was riding a horse for Jesus. So that's the way it got, became referred to at Heartside from that point on. People would say, when are you going to do riding a horse for Jesus again? So here is Sortie by Lefebvre Welly, also known as the Carnival Piece, also known as Riding a Horse for Jesus. Did you feel the horse? <laughs> or if not, did you feel like you were at a carnival? Or if not, maybe you felt something else, and that's fine too. Uh, the next piece, we said earlier that there are different types of fanfares. Jacques Lemons composed this next piece approximately 150 years ago. He called it fanfare, but as you'll see, it has a very different feel from the classic fanfare that we heard earlier. Here is the Lemons fanfare.
Another memory I have from my time at Heartside concerns the hymn called The Lord of the Dance. It was very popular there, they loved it. We would often do it on Easter. But I remember one particular Easter when, for whatever reason, we didn't do it. I'm not sure why. But anyhow, we finished the service, I played my postlude, finished, turned off the organ, got up to mingle with the people, and noticed they were all still in their seats. The minister noticed the same thing, and he looked at them and said, what? And they said, we're not done. What do you mean we're not done? We haven't done the Lord of the Dance. So I turned on the organ, we did the Lord of the Dance, and then everybody was happy. I think of that memory whenever I think of the hymn, The Lord of the Dance. The next piece is one of my favorite arrangements of The Lord of the Dance. Approximately a hundred years ago, Gustav Holst composed a major work called The Planets. In it, there were movements for each of the known planets. There was Mars, the bringer of war. There was Jupiter. I'm sorry, there was Venus, the bringer of peace. There was Jupiter, the bringer of jollity. And as you might guess from the sound, that was a kind of a peppy, upbeat movement except that in the middle of it, there was this beautiful theme. Well, Gustav Holst later took that theme and the words from a poem by Sir Cecil Spring Rice and created, I bow to thee, my country.
10th chapter of the first book of Kings, a woman comes to Solomon bearing riches and various gifts. She has heard about his wisdom and she has some questions she hopes he'll be able to answer for her. When he successfully answers her questions, she gives him the gifts she has brought. That woman was the Queen of Sheba. George Friedrich Handel composed an oratorio based on Solomon, and this next piece comes from that oratorio. It is called The Arrival of the Queen of Sheba. Two of my favorite patriotic songs from the Civil War are When Johnny Comes Marching Home Again and Rally Round the Flag, which is also called the Battle Cry of Freedom. I base this next piece, which I called Civil War Medley, on those two patriotic songs. Thank you. 
Jay Unger ran a summer camp at the Ashokan Center in the Catskills. Every year when camp was done for the summer and he was headed home, he'd feel sad. In 1982, that sadness led him to compose Ashokan Farewell. Two years later, a woman named Grian McGregor wrote lyrics for Ashokan Farewell, and I'd like to share those lyrics with you now, but you can relax, I'm not going to sing them. The sun is sinking low in the sky above Ashokan. The pines and the willows know soon we will part. There's a whisper in the wind of promises unspoken and a love that will always remain in my heart. My thoughts will return to the sound of your laughter, the magic of moving as one, and a time we'll remember long ever after. The music and moonlight and dancing are done. Will we climb the hills once more? Will we walk the woods together? Will I feel you holding me close once again? Will every song we've sung stay with us forever? Will you dance in my dreams or my arms until then? Under the moon, the mountains lie sleeping. Over the lake, the stars shine. They wonder if you and I will be keeping the magic and music, or leave them behind.
Now we're going to have some fun, or at least I plan to have fun. I hope you will too. Next piece is In the Hall of the Mountain King. It comes from the Peer Gint Suite by Edvard Grieg. Now, Peer Gint was a boy, and in this movement, he's trapped inside this mountain, in the Hall of the Mountain King. The Mountain King is a troll, and he's got a whole army of trolls, but what's worse yet, he plans to turn Peer Gint into a troll. So Peer Gint decides he better get out of there, and he tries to sneak his way out past the trolls, but they hear him, they wake up, they start following him, he goes faster, they go faster. Musically what happens is at the beginning the piece is very slow and very quiet. In the low notes, which I play with my feet, you kind of hear the mountain king rumbling around. But then the piece gets a little faster, a little louder, and then a little faster yet, a little louder yet, and then faster, louder, faster, louder, faster, and louder, until ultimately with the final note of the piece, Peer Gint breaks out of the mountain and he's safe. Here is in the Hall of the Mountain King. You can relax, Peer Gint is safe. <laughs> As I said at the beginning of the concert, we began with a toccata and we're going to end with a toccata. Here is the festival toccata of Percy Fletcher.
Thank you for watching and for listening. I hope you enjoyed the concert and I wish you the best. Goodbye.